in that <laughs> in that building, which is pretty funny. Wow. This is where all the first R one thousands were built and the RW seven fifties were built. It was abandoned for a while and we set out on a project to start fixing it up uh, 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 a while ago. And uh just kind of get it back into the condition that it was in. And uh, again, another thing to display. This is really what we had is wood benches. These are actually relic replicas. It's like spend a guitar shop, had to make them a gold in. But uh, <laughs> uh, they were uh, all burned in a fire or something. Uh, but we had a row of them in here. And originally, um, there was really just one bench. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, that is a replacement of the Bridgeport. It was actually a Cincinnati milling machine at that time. And when we moved out of here, uh, it was broken down. And I didn't want to be a junk. I want to put it in an old Bridgeport years ago to stick in here. Uh, but that little lathe and uh, you know belt sanders and that milling machine was what we were doing things on. And obviously going outside to places around Milwaukee to get things made for me. What funded the business was making parts for race bikes. Um, I was a U.S. distributor for Dimag wheels, uh, for uh, Lockheed brake calipers and systems, uh, interstate leathers, a whole bunch of things I was importing out of England. And that was funding the business after I left Harley in 83 and came here. That and then hopes of the RW750 being you know, a great money maker, which <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, these are RW750 uh, cases. There's a whole pile of parts, even some new stuff, but unfortunately some of the, they're in a the barn and in a uh, grain granary that's buried under hay. And because uh, I was renting the barn to a farmer who needed some parts, I can't get to. I wish I had more pieces to show you. Because I got, I actually have 17 sets of crankcases. Boy, I was ready to go. <laughs> so we found some used ones that had been run and stuff. So you could see it was a square four, two stroke rotary valve, Insane. six speed transmission. Um, that is one of the RWs. The other one is in the. Um, uh, lobby, and it's usually in my office, but we moved it to the lobby uh, for a homecoming. This one is the only one that was sold. Uh, it was bought back by the Royal Museum from the guy who, who owned it. Uh, it was written by a guy named Alan. I forget his name. Uh, owned by Ken Singer, uh, and bought by the uh, Machinist Union. Uh, the thing is. The crazy story about the RW was oh, the Gaza thing built was the development project. I don't know if you love story. What wound up happening was that AMA uh, eliminated the Formula One class. Actually, in the time period between when Kevin and whoever else were doing an article, it wound up uh, on the cover of the Cycle magazine, the uh, RW. And uh, from the time they got to, started doing the story to where the where the magazine published, which is like three months or four months, they made it announced that that was the last year for Formula One. So I'm sitting there looking at the cover of the magazine <laughs> with tears practically running down my face. <laughs> Here it is on the cover, and there's nowhere to go from here. You know? Although uh, a guy in England didn't wind up winning a uh, Isle of Man TT sidecar race. Uh, the only other guy who ever got, got these engines run on a guy named Nigel Rollison. And if the engine is in uh, the, uh, rep the uh, rebuilt original bike, so this is the sole one, the other one was the, the first one, which I never sold, so this, they were, they're almost twin of each other. It was the last, you know, I guess the validation level bike, and then this was the first production bike, so they're pretty much identical. The engine out of that bike got sold to a guy who raced a D-Sports race car and won a bunch of races with that. Um, that was a class where they could run 850cc, two strokes, and 1,000cc. Dave Ammon. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> square four rotary valves. Square four rotary valve, 750 cc. This they made 165 horsepower at the output shaft of the what? transmission. This made this weighed 304 pounds. That was a fast motorcycle. It had a lot more horsepower than a TC 750, and it was about 40 pounds lighter than a TC 750. Well, oh, maybe not Kevin. He had some pretty cool parts. Dude, no way. A standard TC 750 was about 345 pounds. Like that thing. What do you four. think of that? Like, I don't and wish I could ride on that. My TC 750 <laughs> had only like 125 horsepower. Some of them might have had 140, but the yeah. very best ones. In fact, the last time that bike, one of the last, the last year it was being raced, Doug Bronick rode it for a couple of races, and the one in particular I remember at uh, at Briar, uh, I'm sorry, at uh, Moroso down in Florida. He was running against uh, Johnny Long riding a TZ750 that was really fast. It's one that had a bunch of Bonneville records. 
the guy's name who, who owned that thing. I mean, they must have 40 Bonneville records. You know what I'm talking about? I can't remember his name. But anyhow, this was out against it. And he went by that 750 like it was a 250 in practice. Mm -hmm. Wound up crashing it, picking it up and finished second in the race. And he had a huge lead when he jumped it. Maybe Teague? Uh, Teague? No, uh, darn, I just can't remember his name. It's that lawyer. What is his name? Yeah, a lawyer out of Florida. He has, oh, he's running at a 500 to 600. Ron, he take the product sold the can? No. And he has more CDs than anybody else. Yes, yeah. He used to take and take a 350 crank in one side and 250 in the other to run in a 650 class and stuff like that. It's going to have half of that. But his bikes were really fast. And John could ride them. Like, really, oh, yeah, that's cool. Geez, I was about to answer the phone. It worked. 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 So that was going on. And, uh, like I said, we were busy making all these other components. We were making them famous clad aluminum brake rivers, and we were making adapter kits to put the die mags onto any bike that you had. So I had piles and piles of drawings of everything from a, you know, a uh, uh, 500 Hondas to 550 Kawasaki's to anything you wanted. We put brakes and wheels on it. So we were always, Henry was busy making any kind of little adapters and things on the milling machine. And the Henry and the machine Yeah. I hired him. He had been working for a uh, race car engine builder, uh, and uh, I hired him away. So uh, thought that was a fun piece of the story. There's another interesting piece of the story that I thought I'd share with you when we had out here. It's, it's kind of like a museum thing, and that is the story behind the 11.5, which is a long, long story, and I think it's worth sharing because this has been a long, hard road. You know, I set out to build race bikes and to build sport bikes. Uh, real genuine ones. Obviously, when you're building a Formula One bike at home, that's, you're serious about what you're doing. You may be really stupid about going about it and thinking that you could do it, but, you know, we were very serious. So, shortly after... Uh, there's a little VR, a little history here. Shortly after uh, this came along, I wound up doing the prototype of the RR1000, uh, which was the... Uh, XR1000 powered uh, street bike, street slash race bike, which I built to try to fit in a class because there were 50. Uh, I wanted to build a street bike so it couldn't be banned completely by the AMA, but I still was interested in racing. And there was a category where you could build 50 of a 50 of a street bike would make you legal for the AMA twins class at that time. So we built the R1000. There were only 47 engines left at Harley. They were left over 83 engines actually, and. Uh, they were going to scrap them because of five years and five years after they can throw them in the dumpster. So 88 was coming and I'm like, whoops, instead of throwing them out, will you sell them to me? But they only had like 47, so I had to buy three from dealers to finish the 50 bikes. Um, but that bike, I had done that. They had used one of those chassis for uh, Lucifer's Hammer 2. And so in 87, I was called in February of 87 to come to a meeting down at Harley um, with a small team of guys who said they wanted to build a road racing bike because Von Beals had been to Laguna Seca and seen that there were no Harleys there at the time, but why don't, why don't they do something about that? <coughs> so uh, those guys over the winter thought about it and they put a meeting together and they brought me in as a kind of a consultant. And in the meeting they were talking about um, taking an, X, an XR750 type engine, making it a thousand cc, um, putting in a five speed transmission instead of a four speed, you know, and going racing against this new superbike wheel, which is a thousand cc 750 four cylinder thousand cc twin. And I had read the rule books and I'm kinda of sitting in the meeting like, wait, wait, wait. You know, and they're like, we can make a mover modified chassis. I said, guys, don't do this. Build a water cooled bike. I said, you could build a water cooled thousand cc four stroke that wouldn't just compete, that would dominate. It would dominate over seven fifty fours. It's got better drivability, you know, better torque, better drive out of the corners. And I was talking about how the Ducati SS I rode in Superbike versus the T Z seven fifty and this thing in Formula One the tractability and what you can do. So if you're even close on horsepower, you've got a big advantage. 